The rest of the fading day passed in a flurry of activity. Selcina and Cullen stood guard in case of a sudden attack by the Fog Panthers, while the hunters, Falk, Aaron, and Jelminolan scoured the area for the plants they needed to create their disguise paste, and Trogodon and Kara explored the border around the taboo zone in search of the ideal place for the ambush. Everyone improvised when necessary to ensure they were together again before sundown, and finally they were all down on their hunkers around a hole in the ground where Falk had mixed the paste together. Each of them smeared the slimy, strong-smelling green-brown concoction onto themselves until their body odours were completely disguised. By the end of it, they all resembled creepy swamp monsters— and Aaron couldn't stop himself from laughing in spite of the looming danger. Trogodon looked as if he wanted to crack a few suitable jokes for the occasion, but Aldini's warning looks ensured he kept his mouth shut. With his two hands filled with slippery paste, Aaron turned towards Cullen, who was watching him suspiciously, his tongue hanging out. "'And what exactly are you planning to do with that stuff?' asked the wolf tartly. Aaron couldn't hide a certain amount of gratification. "'If you want to fight on our side, then they can't catch your scent,' explained the apprentice, and slapped the disgusting mixture onto the white fur of the flinching wolf, proceeding to rub it all over. Cullen squirmed. "'You're going to comb all that out later,' the wolf informed his friend, then stayed still and allowed the procedure to take place. By the time the sun had set, they were all covered in the paste except for Trogodon, and were creeping towards the place where they were going to set their trap. It wasn't long before Kara gestured to them that they had reached their destination, and Aaron nodded in appreciation when he saw it. The young woman and the dwarf had chosen well. A large tree had fallen over a few days previously, doubtless during the last storm, and had created a little clearing, five paces by eight. The vines, with whose aroma they had just disguised their scents, were climbing and falling everywhere, and the undergrowth offered plenty of hiding places. Aaron looked up at one of the surrounding trees, and wondered if he should take up position there, but Falk spotted him and shook his head vigorously. They had all agreed not to say a word, and so Aaron refrained from asking the question that was on the tip of his tongue, and followed his master's command. 